Justin Trudeau is in big trouble, and it's about fucking time. For seven years, we've had to deal with this guy. Uh, we, we like to say people kind, not necessarily mankind. Uh, the decisions she makes as Attorney General, particularly in this matter, uh, are her decision that I was not uh, directing or pressuring her. If you don't want to get vaccinated, that's your choice. But don't think you can get on a plane or a train beside vaccinated people and put them at risk. Canadian security agencies have been actively pursuing credible allegations of a potential link between agents of the government of India and the killing of a Canadian citizen, Hardeep Singh Nijar. But the tide has finally turned. Canadians are rejecting Justin Trudeau in mass. A new Angus Reid poll shows 39% of Canadians would vote Conservative, with only 28% for the Liberals, an 11-point gap. But what's even more interesting are the calls for Trudeau to step down as leader of the ruling Liberal Party. Unsurprisingly, 82% of Conservative voters think so. But what is most shocking is that 41% of Liberals want Trudeau to step down as leader of their party. That's close to half of all Trudeau voters who don't think he's right for the job. That is insane. But what would happen if Trudeau actually resigned as leader of the Liberal Party before the next election? Who would replace him? And more importantly, would this man or woman be capable of defeating the political behemoth that is Pierre Polyev? Let's find out. The most obvious replacement for Trudeau is his closest ally in Parliament and Deputy Prime Minister, journalist turned professional nodder, Christia Freeland. Freeland rose quickly through the ranks of the Trudeau government, from Minister of International Trade to Foreign Affairs to Intergovernmental Affairs to Finance Minister, a role she still holds in tandem with Deputy PM. A poll from Nanos taken last year showed 25% of Liberal voters saying Freeland is the best candidate to lead the Liberals, with Trudeau only getting 18%. But even if she's popular with Liberal voters, she isn't overly popular with the rest of the country, for the same reason she's in her position of power in the first place. She's a carbon copy of Justin Trudeau. She's arrogant, she's out of touch, and she is an international elitist who puts the demands of the global ruling class before the interests of the Canadian people. But unlike Trudeau, she wasn't the grandchild of a gasoline tycoon. Instead, she's the grandchild of a literal Nazi. Another contender for Trudeau's role is a relatively new power player in the Canadian government, Melanie Jolie. Since the beginning of the Trudeau government, it's been clear that her and Justin have been exceptionally close. She was made a cabinet minister right off the bat, and has since served in five different cabinet roles, including her current prestigious position of Minister of Foreign Affairs. But even with liberal regs like the Toronto Star, questioning why she's in that role, it leads you to wonder why Trudeau would do that. Now, this is an unsubstantiated rumor. But here at Backbench, we want you to have the full picture and be as much in the loop as Ottawa insiders are. I was told in 2019 by a guy well-connected in Ottawa that Justin and Sophie Trudeau were separated at the time and were both seeing other people. Sophie with her close friend and actor Idris Elba, believe it or not. And Justin was having an affair with Jolie. Now, these were rumors coming out of a city and industry full of professional bullshitters. So who knows what's true? And to be honest, who really cares? I mean, it's not like Jolie was an underage student at West Point Gray or something. But it is interesting to have seen Jolie rise through the ranks with Trudeau basically grooming her to become his successor. Now, this is a guy I could see the Liberal Party rallying around. Mark Carney is the former governor of both the Bank of Canada and the Bank of England. Imagine when the next election rolls around. How bad will our inflationary crisis be? 
especially considering the Trudeau government is playing around with this idea. The bill would introduce uh, a framework to develop a guaranteed livable basic income. Let's say it's 2025. The country reeling from a cost of living crisis elects a conservative majority. That will be a complete rejection of Trudeau's spendonomics. Remember, he's the guy who said this. You'll forgive me if I don't think about monetary policy. But Mark Carney has been in charge of the institution that determines Canada's monetary policy. Now, you could rightly blame Carney for much of the inflation we see today since his quantitative easing policies of the time inflated the money supply. But one thing we know about big government lovers like those who vote liberal, they don't understand the nuances of economics. However, Carney would be the perfect opponent for Pierre. Carney is a former Goldman Sachs banker, a fact that would be easily exploited by Pierre's everyman messaging. What you're, what you're saying is you oppose pipelines in Canada, but you support them in the UAE and in Brazil. That's what you've actually said. There are specific That's your double standard. It is not a double standard. It, it is, is a double standard. A, no, it's not. You, you it's make not. billions of dollars off Mr. foreign Collier, pipelines and you would, shut them I down here at home you, putting I our people out of work. You that you are a representative of the Canadian people. And one of your responsibilities, including at this committee, is, is to fight to for Canadian form, jobs, it, and, and not foreign for, jobs exactly like you. Exactly. Now, time for some notable mentions. These are people I could see taking up the liberal mantle, but who aren't considered frontrunners. Catherine McKenna. The former environment minister turned jet setter environmentalist, she was and is a heavy supporter of the carbon tax, a policy that Canadians have come to understand increases the cost of everything. She was also famous for letting the liberal secret slip. I said that if you actually say it louder, we've learned in the House of Commons, if you repeat it, if you say it louder, if that is your talking point, people will totally believe it. Joyce Murray ran against Justin Trudeau in the previous Liberal leadership and was the runner-up. She's since served in the Trudeau cabinet, including her current role of Minister of Fisheries, where she's arbitrarily halved the legal fishing areas on the West Coast while doing nothing on the East Coast, where the Liberals are desperate to keep their votes. Jody Wilson-Raybould left the Liberal Party after the SNC-Lavalin affair and has written a book that smashes Trudeau. I could see her coming back with vengeance to seek the leadership. However, I think she's actually more popular with conservatives than she is with liberals, since she single-handedly almost collapsed the Trudeau government. Now the real question is, will Trudeau cave and resign before the next election? If he did, and the liberals were quickly able to rebrand, that might be the only way the party can win in 2025. But that would require Trudeau to have the capacity for self-reflection. If I was to guess, I say he will hold on to power for as long as possible, even if he drags the liberal ship down with him. As for me, I'm one of those 18% of conservatives that don't want him to resign. I want us to crush him with a massive majority. I want to see him lose spectacularly. And fortunately for us, that seems to be what polling indicates.